Okay, we're all... okay. We're back. I got Coach here. I'm gonna, as usual, let him get started with a. Let me make sure we record again. Yep. Um, opening statement, and then we'll take your questions. I know you guys are lined up in the chat. Great to see everybody again. It's been a while. Um, more than 24 hours. It's a long time. Uh, gosh, I didn't know how I was going to get by not seeing you, Lauren. Um, anyway, um, you know, day of uh, good day on Saturday. Um, really proud of our guys. It was, uh, uh, you know, not an easy place to go against a veteran team. Uh, I thought I thought Andre Cabello did a great job stepping up. Um, and, uh, you know, anytime you go 10 of 10 down the stretch um, from the free throw line, you make your last five shots, uh, DeMonte Williams, a senior, uh, knocking his down. I thought defensively, um, especially, uh, until the last two minutes, I thought it was about as good as, 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 as we could be. I thought we did, it did a great job of taking the three point line away from them, uh, when almost 42% of their shots come from three. So. Uh, you know, we'll take it. Uh, it was an emotional week. Uh, and uh, now we uh, now we get into the last week of season. It's March. Um, we play, in my opinion, uh, you know, I, I've been fortunate to see both Gonzaga and Baylor in person. I think uh, Michigan's in their caliber. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, Juwan's done a, a, a really good job. It's a veteran team. I've uh, been very, very impressed with uh, Mike Smith, their point guard, uh, who's known as a, uh, has always been known as a really good scorer, uh, and yet he's a facilitator. He's made them better. Um, and then, uh, you know, the, uh, the improvement of, of, of Livers and, and, uh, and Wagner, uh, and then, you know, Hunter's having a, Hunter gives them an inside presence that maybe they didn't have last year. Uh, so a uh, very connected team, a team that plays uh, with a lot of passion, a lot of energy, and um, uh, we'll have to play very, very well uh, up there to, uh, to beat them. Hey, Coach, my question is about um, the inbounds formation we've seen this season a few times, um, and apologies if you've already explained this on a previous call, but... Uh, mostly towards the end of the game when you've got the it's like a football formation like a trips left or like a run and shoot offense kind of thing you've got three guys lining up on the left one guy on the right before they go in so my question is like how you guys kind of came up with that and practice it and, and how that works strategically I you know it's just one of those things that you you sit there one day and you you, you try to figure out and this goes back a while I mean we we actually had it in at uh at Oklahoma State, uh, we had it in at, at SFA. Um, you know, it's just one of those deals that you sit around and you think, okay, how can you guard it? You know, how, what, what's, a, what's a formation that's really hard to guard? And, and uh, uh, you know, it worked great for this team and has worked, and it's just a little bit unique. You don't see it all the time. And, uh, you know, for the most part, it's been, uh, it's been pretty effective for us. Has that any inspiration derived from football or is it just strictly a basketball thing? Oh, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, it's just being unique. I, I, I think it's just being creative. I, I don't know. I think that, you know, we think, try to think about different formations or different things that people haven't seen and, and, and it still may be effective. So no real thought process behind it for football, but uh, you know, if, if it's the spread formation, yeah, we stole it from football You can call it whatever. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Hey, Brad, you mentioned uh, Andre there. How have you seen him kind of approach these last couple of games without Io, and, and what stood out about him to you? Well, one, he doesn't fear the moment. Um, you know, he, and I say this, and, you know, he's, he's an alpha. Um, you know, his personality thrives in those situations. He's been that guy, you know, his whole career, uh, whether it be uh, in high school at High, whether it be uh, with the Puerto Rican national team, uh, he's not afraid. He's he's got so much experience playing against uh, older people. Uh, you know the FIBA stuff has been huge for the for that progress, and and he just you know he doesn't fear it. Uh, you know, will he make a mistake or two? Sure, but uh, you know more often than not, he's going to make a lot of right uh, right plays. How has he grown most during the season, Brad? You know, I think it's been. Um, uh, 
from the basketball side, it's been all mostly on the defensive side. You know, I think that, you know, he's always been a great rebounder. I watched him get 19 in a game. I think he's, you know, he's so instinctive. And I think it's taking that instinct and applying it to, to, to a structure, to a, um, you know, a system and, uh, you know, learning to pick and choose on the offensive end when he can go and when he shouldn't. And, uh, and understanding that not at every time's go mode. Uh, and yet, um, you know, that's, that's, that's what he's been able to do is, is be effective when he does go. And, and he's, he's really grown from a maturity standpoint, understanding the game and in, in our system. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Brad. Um, you know, rank number four this morning is the highest ranking in 16 years for this program. Uh, and this late in the season, uh, anyway, no, maybe getting the, the program back to this level was a goal. But is there anything in particular over the you know, thing back two years ago to you know where it was to where it is now that has maybe driven that progress? No, it's the process. It's just the process. Um, you know, there's no. Um, time frame on, on, on a process, really. I mean, you, you want it sooner than, than, than later, obviously, but uh, again, you, it's, there's certain things you don't rush. It takes everybody. It takes a great administration. Uh, it takes a, a great coaching staff. It obviously takes great players. Um, you know, I, we've been, we've been very fortunate in the recruiting game that we found guys that, that fit our character um, and, and, um, and, and fit our system. Uh, and you know that, that then it then it can happen. And um, but it's 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 just the process, Scott. And and uh, I'm, I'm I'm excited about that because it's uh, uh, where I believe this program should be and and uh, has the capability to be. And uh, is it there every year? You know I hope so. But uh, again, I think overall we're laying a great foundation uh, for, for the future. I guess since. I haven't asked yet any update on IO, you know, for his availability, maybe tomorrow or this week. Day to day. Thank you. Brad, does uh, some of the prognosticators are projecting you guys as a number one seed right now, even though the season's not over. Uh, is Does that feel like ball in hand for you guys? And is that a talked about goal? We talk about it, sure. I, you know, I, I think that, that we've seen, you know, Michigan's Michigan's in a, in a really good position to be the one seed in the, uh, in the conference tournament, you know. And, uh, um, you know, it's something we've talked about. It's a unique situation in the, in, in the league where not everybody's, for, for obvious reasons, not playing the same amount of games. Um, I, I've, I've said this from the start. It was always about getting to the final chapter. I think Dan Gavitt and his crew – at the NCA have done an unbelievable job. Uh, and I mean, unbelievable. You start thinking about all the organization and, and putting an NCA tournament together uh, to try to stay safe and not having it in regions and, and so on and so forth. And to, to get to that final chapter is all we've talked about. And, uh, you know, as the seasons progressed and you put yourself in a position to be, you know, one or two seed and, and there's obviously, uh, you know, you, you, you feel good about that. But, uh, you know, a lot of basketball left. Selection Sunday is not tomorrow. And, um, you know, we're going to go out and, and, uh, and, and compete and play as hard as we can and try to get – just keep trying to get better. That's all, we, that's all we're trying to do. And Michigan has played a, a good number of games. Is it pretty clear what they try to do, what their scheme is? And is, is tomorrow about countering that and as well as trying to just execute, you know, two quality teams having to execute – they're good. They're good. They, then there's no doubt. I mean, what they do, they play really hard. I think they're, uh, I have a great appreciation for, for their connectivity. Um, you know, I think they're, they're, they play with great energy. Um, and I would, I would fully expect us to, to, to do the same. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's two good basketball teams and, and uh, uh, who've earned the right and they've earned the right. They've, they've, they've won all the one game. So, um, you know, they're, they've earned the right to be where they're at. And I've got a great appreciation for that. Thank you.
Brad, I know last week you said, you know, these games really don't matter. I mean, your resume is pretty much set, and whether you play or not probably doesn't affect much. But, I mean, Andre just called it a statement game. I'm sure your kids are, are kind of licking their chops to get a shot at a potential Big Ten champion, number one seed. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think you, you, you pinpoint certain games that come up on your schedule every year. They become um, probably more relevant as you – you know, as the season progresses and, uh, you know, obviously being two highly ranked teams, um, you know, there's, 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 there's more attention brought to it. Um, you know, I think that when you go through conference play, it's, it's, it's a grind. It's, we all go through it and, and it is nice to, um, uh, maybe get a little different perspective on a, on a game. Uh, but um, again, you know, it's it's two good teams that are going to play hard, and uh, you know we'll have the potential to meet again in a week. Um, and you know, it's it's you know there's a lot of things that are pretty close to set from the conference standpoint. But um, you know, again, the national stuff is is uh, the most important stuff. They've got tremendous play out of Smith and Brown, and obviously you with Grandison. Does the transfer portal give you a chance to remain old? I mean, to, to immediately become old and remain old? It gets you a chance to meet immediate needs. And uh, obviously, you know, Michigan's done it. I mean, I give the Smith kid a lot of credit because they met their need at the point guard spot. And uh, uh, he's, done a, he's done a fabulous job. I've enjoyed watching him play. Thank you. Hey, Coach, with Io on the bench the last couple of games, what have you just seen out of him, um, maybe with him either just taking it back and observing or still, you know, providing some kind of input, even if he is um, on the bench? No, he's a great leader. He's, you know, he's a guy that thinks the game. He knows the game. He can, he can grab guys in a timeout, um, you know, those, those subtle whispers in their ear. Um, you know, he sees things that he can – uh, talk about from his position and 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 that since he's been there and done that and um, there's no there's no no doubt he's a steadying influence uh, on the bench do you think this little break might help him in the long run in the sense of he gets to see you know his teammates succeed without him on the court when he you know usually has maybe a lot riding on his shoulders in like a late game situation we'll find out We'll find out, you know, and, and that's that's um, to to be determined. No crystal ball there. All right, thank you. Good morning, Coach. I feel like Andre Corbello has really improved a lot on the defensive end. In my eyes, can you kind of dive into what you've seen from him in terms of his improvement this season? Yeah, I, you know, like a lot of freshmen, there hasn't been um, maybe as much emphasis on that end in high school. Um, and the, and the accountability and, and with us, you know, most of the time he's guarding lead guards, uh, primary ball handlers, um, you know, everything starts with, with them at the, at the defensive end. And, uh, he's been able to roam. He's always been a very high steel guy because he anticipates, um, there's much more accountability, uh, and especially with the guards that are in this league, uh, you know, you can't just roam and leave them around and, and, uh, you know, if you make a mistake, go well. Uh, if you make a mistake at this level, you get, you, you get burned. And uh, uh, so he's really grown there from that aspect. You've mentioned Mike Smith a lot today um, and given him a lot of praise. What's going to be Andre's most difficult aspect in terms of defending a kid like that? Well, he's, he's, he's got great experience. He's got really good players around him. They put him in a lot of different actions. Um, you know, he's, he's a guy who's a very good shot maker. Uh, you know, known as a prolific scorer, uh, you know, coming up through the ranks and even at Columbia. And, uh, you know, so, you know, you've got to be accountable. And I mean, he's the uh, he's the engine that drives him. And, and, and he's uh, uh, he's done that very well. Hey, coach, for your team and others out there that felt like last year they could go on a run, it seems to have been get back to March and, and finish the job. What does it feel like now for the calendar to turn to March and for yourself and just for the players? Have you noticed any kind of difference as you see that opportunity? Well, we all, I think every coach in the country talks about March and we all know it's March madness. And, and when you, when you get there, you know, this year's trying like no other. And, uh, 
uh, everybody has fought different uh, different battles. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure Juwan's been frustrated not having COVID and being suspended and uh, with his players and every players every players had to make sacrifices. And now we're getting closer to that finish line. Uh, for us, it, it's a little different because we've been we've been building Derek and we've been trying to get there and we didn't get there last year. And, and that's why, uh, you know, senior day this year was was, um, you know, you, you got to get those guys to appreciate that and understand that. And Trent and Demonte and, and, and Zima, those guys understood. They don't know. They, and, and we that was taken from them last year. And uh, so as we draw closer and nearer to that, um, Absolutely. I think it means a lot to this team. You mentioned during the Nebraska game, maybe Iowa was a little subdued. You, you got a laugh out of him maybe one time. Uh, how have you seen since then how he kind of is emotionally or uh, with the guys, how he's kind of holding up? Yeah, he's he's been great. He's about, he's about, he's he's old Iowa. I think he's you know, he's like he got tired of going to doctors and getting scanned and x-rayed and everything else. And that would not be very fun. So I wouldn't be in a great mood either. But uh, uh, but no, he's, uh, he, he's a great teammate and he's been excited for our wins and, uh, was ex as excited as anybody, uh, in the locker room in, in Madison the other day. Thanks coach. Hey, Brad, uh, Juwan's implemented some, a, a lot of ball screen actions this year. So how important is ball screen defense going to be tomorrow night? It's all game. It's all game, both ends of the court. You know, we're very, very similar. We have a lot of similarities. We may not run a lot of the exact same actions, but there's a lot of philosophical similarities. And, uh, uh, you know, they're, they do it um, with four guys. They'll put all their guys in ball screens. And uh, so it's a, it's a very uh, – um, they're good at it, you know, and, and, and – Big boy Hunter gives him a different look. You know, he's a great roller. He's got great hands. He's 7-1. Um, so, you know, it'll be a big, big part of this ballgame. And then defensively, they're up to number four in Ken Palm. What do you think makes them such a strong unit on that end? They're connected. Chemistry. Great, great chemistry. You can tell they're a veteran team. You know, they've been, they've been coached. Uh, you can tell they're, they're dialed in at that end. Um, and then – you know, probably the most important aspect of all that is they play really hard. Thanks, Brad. So Coach, I'm curious if personally at Kansas State or anywhere else, if you've been involved in a, in a matchup like this, number two versus number four, national TV, um, any, any kind of game that had that much importance? Yeah, we, I mean, us in Kansas was always good. Um, uh, we played Duke the year they had Kyrie. Um, I don't know where, where we were all ranked. I don't know if we're one and two or one and three, maybe. Um, yeah, these games are these games are fun. These games are what what this thing's about, you know. And 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 you always enjoy that um, competitive side. And and um, you know, it's it's a it's 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 what this sport's meant to be. Is and that's what makes the March Madness so fun is seeing great matchups. And then I also wanted to ask, just to follow up from Saturday, I asked if, if you had any update on what happened with the, the technicals at the end. I'm just curious if you have any information on what, what Coach Tucker had said to your players to give him the technical or uh, wh what happened in that whole scenario. Nothing, nothing. I think it was just preventing, preventive, so more than anything else. Hey, Coach, can you just, you know, after the years of building here, can you just talk about what, what it feels like to, to have this opportunity in front of you this week and, and going deeper into March? Yeah, it's great. I mean, you know, I, you know you're, I'm so happy for Trent and, and, and DeMonte and, and Zima. And, you know, that, that's why I was crushed last year when, when, when Dre and Kipper and those, and, you know, Tyler didn't get to go through it. Tyler got lucky, got to be able to come back. And, um, you know, and, 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 you know, it's, it's Illinois, Illinois is going to be there again. I mean, we're going to be there again. We're going to be in other NCAA tournaments. You, you're, this always goes to the players and it's great. It's, it's awesome that those guys have been here since the start. They've been here through all the, all the, all the t hard times and, and people saying they, they, 
they stink and they weren't any good when we weren't winning and people criticizing them and, and uh, all that. And, and you have to take all of that and, um, and, and put it on a shelf and understand that good things happen to people who work hard and they never varied from that. So I'm really happy for those guys. I'm, I'm happy for, um, you know, I got a great staff. They don't get enough credit for how good they are. Um, got a great administration. Josh has made all this happen. So it's not just one person that makes a program. I mean, you know, coaches win games, administrators win championships and, 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 and players. And so I'm, I'm, we're in a great situation. We're in a great spot. And what, what, what's the electricity like in that locker room right now? Pretty good. Pretty good. It's pretty excited. You know, and I, I think we, we didn't do much, we didn't do much of anything yesterday. Um, you know, I, obviously it's, it's, it, there's been a lot of games and, um, you know, it's, it was, it was more recovery day and, and a mental day, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, we'll get ready to go here. And it's, it's been, it's been good. Hey, Brad, we've seen these videos of you charging into the locker room after a win, pretty excited. Can, can you describe maybe what comes over you in, in those moments and, and maybe when did that start? You know, I mean, I think when you're when you're when you're trying to build, you know, is that have I always done that? Not really. Um, uh, but I, but I do think that that you get to different levels in your program, and and I want our guys. I mean, this is the best league in the in the maybe in the history of college basketball this year, and winning is really hard. And these guys have accomplished something, and I just want them to know. I'm excited by it, and I don't want them to take I don't want them to take it for granted. And um, I want I want that sense of accomplishment for them, and um, uh, and and you know know that I'm I'm genuinely genuinely fired up for them, and uh, you know if that if that's um, uh, I don't ever want to be in a position we're taking in, we're taking winning for granted. It's hard work, and these guys work their tails off. Do you do any like mental rehearsing for what you're going to do each time, or is it just for in the moment? Pretty spontaneous, to be quite to be quite honest. Pretty spontaneous. Thanks, Fred. Fred, can you talk about Michigan being on pause for a month and then what they've been able to accomplish after that? And just if your staff has kind of talked about how impressive that was to to be able to keep this going after not being able to do much for nearly a month. Well, it's very, 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 very impressive, uh, and and I don't think I put that in perspective. Um, until the other night when I watched Baylor uh, in, in the Kansas game. And, and I actually did not know that Baylor was down 17 to Iowa State in their first game back. And, um, you know, they've been anything but like that. Um, you know, uh, Michigan's been great. And, you know, I think it shows their, their commitment and their, their, um, their veteran leadership. And, and they've been very good. So um yeah my hat's off to him and you mentioned Wagner it, 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 is it stupid to kind of suggest that he might be one of the most you know the most hardest matchups in, in, in the league just because of his length and what he can accomplish and his skill set yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about that he's a really good player and you're, you know you're going to see him bring the ball up the court you're going to see him in ball screens you're going to see him in post-ups uh, you're going to see him shoot a hook shot. You're going to see him, you know, go left, uh, go right. Uh, he's a very good player. He is a very, very good player. And we all knew that coming in. We all knew that when, when John signed him. Uh, and he's done nothing but continue to, uh, to grow his game under Juwan. Thank you, Brad. Hi, Coach. I think some of the fans in Michigan took note, I guess, of your comment the other day about not picking and choosing, which – canceled games to make up and so forth. Was that directed at all at, at the Wolverines or are people reading too much into that? Or? No, it's just, there's nothing to it. I mean, it's, it's, some teams aren't, it's a league that's not playing 20 games. And that's, and that's, that's all there's, there's, there, there is out there. I mean, I've got all the respect in the world. They've won all their games, but, but, but one that's been presented to them. And um, I think it's just a very unusual year, the one off year. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to play them because we're part of the league and the league says we're going to play them. That's who we're going to play. And that was that was all I when asked that question.
Have you guys gotten any more sort of official clarification from the league about how the conference tournament is going to be seated? Is it definitely using winning percentage as far as you know? Or is... I don't know that yeah. exactly. Um, we, we met as a head coaches group a couple of weeks ago just to discuss the move. Uh, but to get into specifics, excuse me, it's going to take somebody a lot smarter than me to figure that out and understand what, what that formula is going to be. Um, and to be honest, I mean, I, there's, um, my, my, my importance is the NCAA tournament. I think that's the final chapter. I think that's what every coach in basketball is striving to get to this year, especially with no fans, uh, for the big 10 tournament or any tournament for the most part. Um, and, and, and just trying to, to get to the end so that the, the, the NCAA tournament does happen and it needs to happen. Thanks. All right. I don't see anything else in the chat. So that that's a wrap. Thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks, Brad. Thank you.